Hi everyone, my guest is Gilbert Ashkar. Gilbert Ashkar is a professor of development studies and international relations at SOAS University of London. His many books published in 15 languages include Perilous Power, the Middle East and US Foreign Policy, co-authored with Noam Chomsky, Marxism, Orientalism, Cosmopolitanism, and this one, more with symptoms, um, the relapse in the Arab uprising, uh, and the viewers, I should share this. It's a signed copy. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Professor. Welcome to our program. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Um, <laughs> oh, of the three books you mentioned, only the um, the last one wasn't uh, translated in Turkish. Yeah, but all of them are in Turkish. Yeah. Yes. The rest are in Turkish. Yes. Well, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we should have this one, but I'll ask you about a little bit about the Arab okay. rising in the program. It's been four years since uh, we have last spoken, and it, the world seems too much changed uh, for me. Do you agree so, uh, first, because of this co uh, COVID pandemic, it especially? Yeah. Uh, what is too much? Sorry, I didn't uh, get the, the world is very different now for me. For oh, example. yeah, oh, since yeah, the four no. years, it's, it's like 10 years or 15 years. The change, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think it's only COVID. Of course, COVID is a major factor, uh, and we, we, we are not even one full year since the beginning of the. the, the, the the, the lockdown here in Europe, but uh, but th this feels like much more than one year. Yeah, it's uh, it's really really heavy. Um, but um, I think uh, if if last time we met was uh, four years ago, that must have been either before the election of Trump. It is or... 14 November 2016. Oh my God! Oh, so that's exactly when, uh, when before, he yeah, yeah, after he was elected and before he he starts uh, yeah. his presidency. And I think those four years of Trump have <laughs> <I'm> always, have <laughs> also felt like very, very, very long. That's uh, exactly what I would like to ask you about. But um, especially in this program, I would rather like you to, to talk about the leftists and the progressives of the world in the aftermath of four years of Donald Trump's presidency. And uh, thus, maybe I should first ask about Mr. Donald Trump himself and the so-called Trumpism. Yet, I think it would be much uh, clarifying, much better if you could tell first what is leftism today? For, since, uh, for example, the left in Europe is very much from that of uh, United States, and also, for example, in Turkey, we we don't seem to know much uh, about what is left, what is right. Maybe you know, one should redefine the center. So, could you elaborate a little bit on this? Hmm. Um. I'm not sure that uh, definitions of left and right, uh, at least when it comes to. Uh, um, what we would call domestic politics, uh, they remain pretty the same in the sense of, you know, the, 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 the big divide has been now for decades between the, the neoliberals uh, pushing for uh, privatization, for dereg uh, deregulation, dismantlement of uh, social uh, safety nets and the rest, and the left, which is uh, opposed to all that. and. Uh, Generally, is pushing in the, in the opposite direction. So, uh, on 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 issues of domestic politics or let's say economic policy, uh, I think the left-right divide is still the same. Where things may change, it is more in uh, in in on political issues, on sometimes uh, international politics issues and things like that, where uh, some events may blur the line. And you may have, and there has been uh, quite a lot of confusion on, on, on many issues. Um, but um, uh, if you take the, 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 the basic uh, core issues upon which people are fighting in their societies, the, 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 about the, the 
social and economic policy. Um, yes, I mean, uh, the, the, the last four years have been, uh, have seen uh, the terrible uh, Trump experience, but uh, this came uh, as uh, the culmination of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of many, many years uh, of, of neoliberalism that starts, uh, I mean, the genealogy of Trump uh, is easily uh, uh, connected to, to, to Ronald Reagan, to the conservative revolution of Ronald Reagan, uh, who, who came to power in 81, um, and uh, to uh, the, the, the Tea Party that formed uh, against, uh, against Obama, before that the, the George W. Bush uh, uh, administration, which was uh, again uh, one further step to the right in, 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 US, uh, in US politics, and Trump was a culmination of all that. So that's a, a trend that has started several decades ago. Uh, uh, and in that regard, I think the, the, uh, the emergence of a new left-wing radicalization among the, the young people, the new generation, is uh, a much newer phenomenon, actually, because you know those same uh, decades have seen the collapse of the Soviet Union, have seen the, a general collapse on the left, have seen the the, the, the traditional uh, uh, social democratic left uh, shift uh, rightward very very sharply, and uh, the, the everything that was connected to the Soviet Union um, lose any credibility, um, uh, and uh, and so you had so many you know announcement about uh, for instance the the death of Marxism and issues like that, and then. The, 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 the really big surprise in 2016 uh, was not uh, the, the, the election of, uh, of, of the emergence and then the election of Donald Trump, uh, which, as I said, is a continuation of, of, a, of a much older trend. The, 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 the major surprise was the emergence of, of, in the United States of Bernie Sanders, in, in the UK of, of, uh, of the Corbyn phenomenon, when uh, Corbyn uh, came to the, 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 the helm of the, the Labour Party, uh, uh, that 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 was the the, the real uh, novelty in, the, in in that in that regard. But uh, and the the, the the other original thing is that this has been mostly uh, a phenomenon based in the the two countries I mentioned, the United States and Britain. Um, there hasn't been anything equivalent, at least to my knowledge, I can't pretend to know all countries on earth, but from, to my knowledge and from what, what I can follow, I haven't seen any, any such uh, phenomenon in, in terms of, of left-wing uh, radicalization of, of the youth. We have seen different phenomena, like uh, if I take uh, the region to which I belong, uh, the, 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 the Arabic-speaking region, the, the, the Arab world, the Arab region. Um, there, yes, I mean, you've had uh, the, the so-called Arab Spring in 2011, so this large, this uh, major revolutionary wave that shook the, the whole region and uh, that reached uh, a level of, uh, of full uprising in six countries of the region in 2011, uh, that was another form of, of youth radicalization because the young people were quite dominant in, in the movement, although it wasn't only young people. Uh, I mean, the, the workers, uh, unemployed uh, of all ages uh, were also involved. But, uh, but like any uprising, of course, it is uh, mostly uh, comprised of young people. And, uh, and so you had also this, and, and this would followed or uh, gave inspiration to some movements all over the world. And it's still going on. Uh, that is um, the, uh, the, what I, I mean, I, I would, I have described from the start as a long-term revolutionary process starting 2011, has gone through a second upsurge in uh, 2019. Uh, starting eight years after the first one, 
you had a second uh, uh, upsurge in uh, four countries in the region. So as a total until now, you have 10 countries, 10 Arabic speaking countries where you have had uh, uprisings, uh, major uprisings. And that's uh, amazing because that's half the countries of the region. It's like imagine you have half of Europe going, uh, including major states, major European states, uh, going in, in uh, I mean, uh, witnessing uprisings. That, that's, uh, that's, that's a very, very important phenomenon. But uh, politically, it doesn't, it didn't take the, the, the form that we have seen in the US and the UK. And uh, that's, that's the, the surprising phenomenon. Uh, probably related to a renewal um, of left-wing thought and of Marxism in, uh, in the UK and the US, where the academia has played a role. It, it was stressed that uh, the, the 68 and all that generation uh, had shifted into academia later on. And then, like me, maybe? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, like me, uh, yes, and so many others. And... Uh, uh, but I'm speaking, I mean, I, joined, I came to the UK in 2007, so I'm relatively recently here. But uh, this has been the case in the US and the UK for those based in those countries. Right. For, for, uh, for uh, I mean, since the, the 80s, I would say that was uh, already a phenomenon. And I think that uh, contributed uh, um, to, to this left-wing politicization of, of, of the young people. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's a positive phenomenon. I mean, Maybe even can... if it were only the United States, it's such a huge and most, I mean, very important country that 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 would be in itself uh, very very important. I'd like to uh, I'd like you to elaborate a little bit later about that as well. But I would yep. like to ask about um, you know many commentators at least the ones that I spoke to say uh, or rather warn that uh, even if Mr. Trump is now gone from the you know White House Trumpiz Trumpism is there to stay um, I would like you to tell tell what do you see as Trumpism or do you agree with this definition and also uh, do you agree with this comment Oh, of course. I mean, it's obvious. And uh, you had countless comments about uh, Trump, is out, Trump is out, but not Trumpism and, and the rest. Well, uh, uh, as I said, I mean, uh, Trump was not, uh, you know, uh, a kind of, of uh, uh, very original phenomenon uh, or surprising phenomenon in, in some way. Uh, may, maybe the, the vulgarity of, of Trump is maybe a surprise, even because he's vulgar, even compared to, to George W. Bush, and that's saying a lot, you know, that's saying a lot. But uh, but uh, um, uh, politically speaking, it's the outcome of a long evolution, a shift to the right, to the far right, and um, and the, the way he has behaved in power the, the has. Uh, uh, consolidated uh, what is, uh, I mean, one can get into disputes uh, about labels, but uh, I, I don't see the, the, that, uh, the description of, of the Trump phenomenon as uh, neo-fascism. I don't see it uh, exaggerated. I mean, uh, the neo meaning here that it's not just a reproduction of, of uh, of the fascism that existed between the two world wars, uh, or even uh, for countries like Spain and, uh, and Portugal, even uh, after the, the Second World War. And no, it, it's uh, it's a new version, a 21st century version that we have we are witnessing. But uh, but uh, we have seen on on the 6th of January uh, the uh, the almost classical fascist side of it in uh, in this. Uh, storming of uh, of the, the the capital in in, uh, in, in washington uh, which which wasn't uh, a joke i mean people uh, tried to, to to make it a laughing matter but when you think that five people died in this it's not that uh, that uh, that funny actually 
And um, no, it it, uh, it was alarming because I think uh, 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 you have a number of uh, of signs showing that uh, there could have been a seizure of power of this kind, or at least this is something that was definitely in the uh, imagination uh, and even I would say in the wishes uh, of. Uh, of, of Trump and uh, a number of his uh, cronies, uh, because you have a number of signals. Uh, the first, of course, his own incitement to and his uh, his cronies like uh, Giuliani and the rest for uh, for this march, march on uh, on Washington, like the march on Rome. Um, uh, their uh, really encouragement uh, for people to to prepare themselves to to. Uh, uh, to, to violence, um, uh, and uh, his um, uh, the, the maneuvers he did. Now, now we, we know that uh, he even uh, was ma making pressure on his attorney general to uh, try to uh, seize the opportunity of, of the, the, the event, but more dangerously than all this is the fact that he soon after losing the election although he never conceded of course but soon after losing the election he uh, uh, dismissed his uh, secretary uh, of defense mark esper and uh, that was because esper was against involving uh, the armed forces well i think in that he was just echoing what uh, the generals in the pentagon uh, Thought they, I presume <laughs> I'm almost certain that uh, they they weren't contemplating uh, what one uh, what Trump wanted to to push them into uh, positively. So he dismissed him and, and put in his stead someone completely decide. And uh, uh, there were already comments that wow that might be uh, the uh, to prepare, you know. Uh, his use of the, I think, 1807 Insurrection Act, uh, through which he can say that, well, we are in a state of insurrection and uh, the, the army, the federal army, federal troops can be uh, deployed uh, in, in, I mean, domestically. Uh, you have this provision in the, in the US uh, constitutional law. And um, uh, uh, the confirmation that he was thinking of that came, uh, just, uh, uh, I mean, uh, just before the 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 um, the, the 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 events uh, when the the, the ten uh, living former Secretary of Defense, including Mark Esper, I mean, who <laughs> was quite close to Trump uh, before being fired. The ten, the, the ten of them warned in a in a common statement against any involvement of troops, and they wouldn't have done that. You can be sure had they not had uh, been nodded to do it by the Pentagon, by people in the Pentagon. That means that Trump was and and the, the Trump crowd were really thinking in in that uh, in that direction. Um, so, so it's it it is much more serious than the uh, you know the this uh, the guy with the the horns and all that. Uh, the, when you look at these pictures, you believe it's a farce. It's farcical. Uh, it's a tragic farce at the very least. You know, it's um, and it could have turned it could have turned um, much more seriously. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, it is. It we have a, a very dangerous trend, and uh, the problem, of course, it's not isolated in the United States, right? As you know, the, the yeah, the 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 far right is uh, has been on the rise over the last few years uh, in, in most European countries, uh, uh, in, in, including key countries. Uh, Italy, France, I mean, no one uh, uh, now dares to predict what will be the outcome of the next presidential election in France, which is uh, supposed to, to happen next year. Um, uh, the the, the 
of course, some of the Eastern European countries. Um, uh, then you have also uh, uh, Bolsonaro in Brazil, you have uh, Modi in India, uh, all of which are uh, political forces that uh, can, I mean, arguably be, be described as neo-fascist. Um, and, and you have a right-wing trend. I mean, you have also Duterte in the Philippines, of course, but also you have this uh, this uh, 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 shift to to uh, to more and more authoritarian kind of policies of uh, of uh, of governments like that of Putin in Russia or Erdogan in Turkey. Yeah, so that's part of of the same trend. And uh, and yes, it is. Uh, it, we are not in the 1930s, but. Uh, uh, well, we are in a 21st century version of, uh, I mean, the closest you could get to, to, to that. But in that sense, um, is Biden administration a break? Uh, maybe I can ask you another question and we can talk this break thing within it. Um, you know, Bernie Sanders and his mittens uh, upstaged the inauguration ceremony for you know Biden and Harris. So why is it? So? Oh, uh, man. Uh, first, I mean the the, the the phenomena of memes and all that uh, are mostly uh, mostly um, promoted by young people. And that's where Bernie Sanders' popularity is is, uh, is greatest. I mean, uh, the, the, most of his base uh, has been uh, composed of, of of young people, the, the youth, and uh, and yeah, that was a. But oh, I mean, that has also been successful among people who are not necessarily very close to Ber what uh, Bernie Sanders represents politically. I mean, I've seen it uh, used by all kinds of people because it's funny at the same time. But uh, still, uh, there's a base to it, which is uh, the, the sympathy that uh, he still inspires uh, among uh, young people in the United States. And uh, yeah, that, that's important. I, I, I would say I, I very much prefer that young people, uh, I, uh, I mean, I very much prefer them to to have sympathy for uh, for Bernie Sanders than for Donald Trump, definitely. <laughs> yeah, or and, even for uh, Biden, actually. Yeah, could, yeah. This is then the Biden thing. I mean, for example, um, some commentators say that you know because, uh, for example, Trump had seven to four million votes, and but Biden himself didn't have eight to two thousand uh, million. Eight to, Two million votes. Uh, it's just because uh, they don't want Trump. So many people had to say okay to Biden. So in that sense, yeah. is, is he a powerful leader? And he, can he bring about his promises? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you look at the negative vote, um, uh, uh, this last presidential election, um, a very sizable proportion of those who voted for uh, for. Biden uh, did not vote uh, because of their uh, appreciation of Biden, but because they wanted to get rid of Trump. Uh, and in that sense, it is the reverse of what you had in 2016, when uh, it was assumed that uh, 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 an important proportion of those who voted Trump were voting anti-Clinton because there had been such a campaign against Hillary Clinton, um, and especially, of course, of the Republicans, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that provoked th those kinds of reactions. But this means that the vote in uh, November 2020 is uh, actually much more worrying than the vote of uh, November 2016 not only because more people voted for Trump than in 2016, but especially because they voted for, for with a big F-O-R, Trump. Uh, Biden didn't have anything really uh, repellent for uh, the average Republicans. 
uh, unlike the even the misogynia that could play in the ca ca case of Hillary Clinton, the, the sexism. Uh, uh, so um, and the legacy of her husband, of course. So the the, the in the case of uh, of Biden, uh, it's almost colorless. Uh, um, Personality. So uh, the, the 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 votes for Trump were were really for what he represents, and even worse. So it's in 2016. A lot of people said, "Well, he is speaking like this in the electoral campaign, but once he'll be president, he, you know, he'll be he'll be part of the system and uh, get back to some normality, right?" Well, he didn't, and <laughs> during four years, he at the beginning he started to. To work in, in that kind, in that way, and he brought within his team some people representing some kind of continuation of the establishment, right? Right. But but gradually he got rid of all this, and he was really building his own thing, not only in the judiciary where, where his impact has been tremendous, as everyone knows, but uh, but he he was he was trying to 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 change everything around him. And people have seen Trump in power for four years, so they had absolutely no. Um, I mean, they couldn't be uh, illusions or wrong about what Trump is. They and, and it is in full knowledge of what Trump is that those uh, seven, up to I mean, close to seventy-five million Americans voted for him, and this is extremely, extremely worrying, of course. That shows uh, that uh, we are in a very, very, very dangerous situation, and uh, I, I don't think that we are out of the wood, you know, uh, with uh, with Biden. Uh, we'll we'll have to see, but uh, but Trump, as he said himself, uh, you know, uh, uh, when uh, when leaving, he well he left the White House. Yes, he left the White House, but not uh, U.S. politics, and uh, and uh, either he will. Uh, um, Take uh, full control of the Republican Party, or he will, or else he will build, he, he will create his own party. I mean, he, I think they are his team are still discussing these issues. Uh, probably, if he, if he, if he, it's easier for him to just carry on if he secured the, the, the control of the, the Republican Party, and uh, that means that uh, this uh, neo-fascism or whatever uh, as i said uh, i don't mind the, the label but anyhow it's far right no doubt about that um is uh, is is very much still there and it's a, a still a very big threat uh, how about the yeah i mean both biden administration are you hopeful in the in any sense uh, because maybe he, he biden himself might be you know old very old and maybe feeble in the sense that we talked about i mean the votes and everything but his he has a um, his team seems to be very eager and you know much more competent than what we have seen before in the last four years in the sense that you know they have an enthusiasm at least to, to so-called save the democracy but also uh, the Democrats, uh, I mean the leftists, like Alexandra Ocasio Cortez, the progressive uh, part of the Democrats, should, should don't we don't we expect that, can't we expect that they will force the administration to be more left leaning rather because it's now very in the right side. It, it wants to stay in the center in that sense when compared to Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, Biden is a is a centrist. Is a, is the, the the he was the, the Obama's mate, and uh, that says it all already. Uh, um, to what degree he is taking the measure of the situation, I'm not sure. Well, in some issues, he seems to be uh, more aware, like everyone, of of the climate, uh, the importance of the climate issue, and things like that. But uh, but uh, in his uh, 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 um, in his stated willingness to to work with the Republicans and to be bipartisan, he's going nowhere because uh, uh, this Republican Party. Uh, is, I mean, any any attempt at uh, ruling uh, at, at the you know at the center. Uh, 
the middle of, of the middle of the road between between the, the Democrats and Republicans mean mean to be very much on the right, uh, given what what it has been and what the, the the establishment of the Democrats. If you put aside those figures that you mentioned, uh, the, 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 the left wing, uh, but the, the, the establishment, the, 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 the Pelosi, the Shaker, and all that. They are also. I mean, they they don't represent any 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 left wing in, in that regard, and uh, and uh, therefore uh, the danger is that uh, this will be uh, uh, this will fail in uh, in uh, on the one hand in uh, uh, convincing the seventy five million. I mean, a sizable section of the seventy five million who voted Trump to to. To, to shift away from such policies, and on the other hand, uh, convincing those uh, 80 plus millions, million that voted for, for Biden to, uh, because they wanted to get rid of Trump, but to carry on uh, uh, opposing the, the, the Trump-like uh, Trump -like policies. Um, so it's not it's not obvious. We are still we, we are still very much in the midst of very dangerous times. We are li living through uh, several pandemics, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and a far-right pandemic. And uh, the second one is deadlier, more dangerous than the first one. And uh, unfortunately, there is no vaccine for, uh, uh, for the far-right pandemic. Uh, the, it has to be uh, fought by by uh, political measures, by by uh, uh, radical change of economic policies, by uh, uh, shifting away from from the from neoliberalism, because all this all this this far right pandemic is the direct outcome of decades of uh, of of neoliberalism. That's that's what you get with this uh, deregulation. With this uh, uh, market uh, system that becomes a market society, not only a market economy, everything is uh, marketized, everything is commodified, and uh, that creates such a disruption in the lives of people that uh, the, the ground is prepared for for far right pandemic, a far right pandemic like the one that we are seeing globally. Um. I would like to ask you about the British left uh, and how is Mr. Jeremy Corbyn doing these days? I mean, what's going on in Britain? Because now the Brexit is Brexit. I mean, <laughs> England is out of uh, the European Union. How is it? How things are going there? Uh, very poorly. I mean, the uh, not only we have, <laughs> we have Boris Johnson, uh, who's uh, Quite right wing. I mean, it's not. He's not uh, a British equivalent of Trump in the sense that he's not as much far right as uh, as Trump is in U.S. politics. Uh, but pretty much to the right. This is the hard right, if not not the far right, maybe, but really the hard right of the conservative. And that's already uh, <laughs> saying a lot. Um, and uh, and the the, the, the Labour Party. Uh, I mean, the, the, the left wing of the Labour Party suffered a, a heavy defeat with uh, with uh, with Keir Starmer, who who campaigned pretending to um, to unify the Labour Party and uh, to you know uh, more or less like Biden wanting to unify uh, the U.S. society. Uh, Starmer. Projecting himself as uh, as uh, a bridge between left and right in the in the Labour Party, but uh, very soon he appeared uh, as actually uh, very much uh, uh, implementing a right wing agenda. I mean, within the Labour Party uh, uh, and uh, the the way he he uh, behaved towards Corbyn, uh, in particular in person. Uh, and some of the, the Corbyn team is uh, is uh, is is really very bad. I mean, the the, the use of the scourge of uh, of anti-Semitism in a very opportunistic and demagogic way was was uh, below everything. You know? um, so it, it's uh, 
it's uh, it, it, it's bad from that point of view. That was a defeat for this left wing wave that you had, and and Corbyn at some point representing represented uh, a major hope for uh, millions, for uh, hundreds of thousands of young people. Um, that was really uh, very much uh, a moment of enthusiasm and hope and uh, all that. Um, but uh, but yeah, it failed. The, the, the left still hasn't uh, come to real clarity. You know, we still have a lot of debates about why the failure. Um, beyond those uh, finally petty discussions, Brexit or not Brexit, anti-Semitism or not anti-Semitism, or you know all these issues. I think more generally, uh, the problem has been that you have had a, a, a youth radicalization wave, as in the United States. And this is a generation that uh, uh, um, is uh, allergic to some forms of, uh, of bureaucratic rule, of, uh, of uh, authoritarian leadership, and uh, authoritarian organizations, uh, the kind of organizations that uh, that uh, you know belong to the 20th century, the, the, that kind of model. I think that this new generation was looking for something different, and uh, and it uh, uh, it's not a coincidence that in both the United States and the UK, uh, uh, two, re I mean. Old people, uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn and uh, uh, Bernie Sanders, um, became the, the the symbol around uh, whom? Because you, of the Beatles. <laughs> no, no, because they appeared as well. They are old enough not to have, you know, the, those kind of uh, um, caudiest uh, ambitions, you know. <laughs> Um, and uh, and they also looked as uh, honest guys, who, and indeed well, they are yeah. definitely honest. Yeah. So so that's why they attracted the sympathy. Except that in the United States, that went through a very loose kind of organization, which is the the Democrats and all that. Mm -hmm. You you had all sorts of uh, radical left currents uh, uh, in, uh, evolving within that. But uh, in in the UK, this went into a much more rigid kind of party, the Labour Party, much more uh, organized with uh, with all kinds of uh, of uh, bureaucracies and uh, all type, even of old old left policies. Not only, uh, uh, I mean, all policies in general. So I think there was a disconnect here. And um, uh, that's how I would understand this this failure, <clears throat> which hasn't been, uh, which I mean we haven't seen at the, in the same way in the U.S. Where we, we just spoke of the popularity of Bernie Sanders, is still very very much popular, um, and uh, this young radicalization is still there in the United States, and actually, you know. Last year, we had Black Lives Matter, the Black Lives Matter movement, which was described in, 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 the, in the New York Times uh, as the largest ever movement in the history of the United States. And it was estimated that 26 million people have been on the streets in the United States uh, last year uh, on uh, the BLM issues, Black Lives Matter issues. And that's a huge, that's absolutely huge. And this is, so that shows you that this radicalization is going on. The potential is still there. And it's a tremendous potential. Um, the, the challenge will be to go beyond uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, including because of his age. I mean, <laughs> so the, 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 there will be a need for, for uh, uh, I don't know, some form of organization of, of, uh, of this radicalization that has enough legitimacy and representativity in order to turn it into a real pol and, and, and uh, effective political force. Uh, in the UK for now, the situation is much um, 
much uh, much That's worse. Right. In the sense. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the defeat has been uh, quite heavier in the UK. Uh, because you mentioned the people on the street, maybe I should ask uh, the Arab uprising, which I will, you know, ask actually. But before that, I I was a little bit surprised actually. You didn't mention once, even in the you know Arab uprising, uh, when you mentioned about that, the women movement. It's oh, of course, all yeah. around the world, it's getting yeah. strong, even in Turkey. Who are still can and stay in the streets on the streets are women everywhere. Yeah. Don't you yeah, think they're politically uh, mature and the, you mentioned organization? It's organized. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. How, what do you think? Well, you know, uh, when when you say youth and young people, young people are not male, right? Uh, but you they, be, they, they belong to both, both sexes. Now, what you are referring to is a specific specific women movement, and uh, uh, that is definitely uh, uh, that has been uh, very prominent in the uh, mostly in the second wave. I mean, uh, in the Arab uprising, uh, the first wave you had in Tunisia an important uh, women movement. Uh, Taking part uh, in in the and uh, even in the leadership of uh, of the uprising, uh, you've had uh, some participation of women in, even in a country like Yemen, Egypt, but uh, nothing um, uh, at a real uh, uh, prominent level because of uh, of, uh, of a lot of sexism in society. Uh, in the second wave uh, in Sudan, the, the, the role of, of women has been absolutely remarkable, uh, even though it wasn't reflected in the leaderships of, uh, uh, of, of the movement, but definitely in the, in, the rank, in the grassroots of organization that was very, very important. Um, and then in, uh, in, in, in Algeria, in Lebanon, and in, even in Iraq, we, we have seen uh, well, a good participation of women, which for societies in the Middle East and North Africa uh, is uh, something that you would note as an important development. Now, when you look at Black Lives Matter uh, demonstrations, you have a, a lot of women, uh, but that isn't, uh, you know, uh, in itself news because of, uh, of the fact that the movement is, uh, I mean, there is no... Uh, uh, women are not secluded at home or whatever in the United States, uh, especially in the, the young generation. So, so um, yeah, I mean, but uh, uh, here and there, there, you can see women at the forefront, like in Poland now, uh, the forefront of, uh, of, of struggle. Um, uh, but uh, that's, uh, as I said, I mean, it depends on the countries that we, it's not, uh, a general phenomenon. The general phenomenon is is more uh, in terms of young people than in terms of specifically feminist on on I mean on specifically feminist issues. Uh, that's part of the general agenda, general uh, uh, programmatic profile of this uh, radicalizing youth. Yes, um, uh, but just uh, uh, part part of their of the of the agenda. Not uh, as a separate movement. And um, I, I'll just pass the Arab uprising since you mentioned because I had a question because I took forty-four minutes of your time already. So um, could you tell us about a little bit how the how the Turkey is seen from there, from where you stand? Because nowadays our government, uh, since the Trump administration gone uh, and our leader was very very good in terms with, uh, with with Mr. Trump. Now it's trying talking about reforms and changing and other thing. How do you see Turkey? Um, yeah, from where I stand, you mean uh, not where I am now, which is uh, the UK, yeah, no London. <laughs> you mean uh, from the, the the Arab world uh, perspective, I presume. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, uh, well, Erdogan had uh, his. Um, moment of glory, if we can say, in 2011. And here we can point to a major difference between the two waves, the two revolutionary waves, 
of 2011 and 2019 uh, in the region. Um, in the first one, I mean, a major difference between the two is that in the first one, the Muslim Brotherhood was a key uh, player. That is, uh, uh, they did not initiate the movement anywhere, but they, uh, uh, they joined it and tried to co-opt it and hijack it uh, everywhere. And uh, that put them in a prominent uh, position. Um, backed by uh, uh, Qatar, which has been their uh, sponsor, the Emirate of Qatar, since uh, uh, the mid '90s, and uh, and and also by Turkey. Turkey uh, joined uh, in that, and uh, Turkey looked at uh, the, the, the the Muslim Brotherhood at the possibility for Turkey to 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 play a, a leading reg regional role. Um, so that was the, the, the moment of, uh, of uh, great uh, ambitions, uh, of, uh, of when, when great ambitions started with, uh, with Erdogan. Um, and, uh, and yes, he was, uh, I mean, intervening on all fronts, uh, from, from Libya to, to Syria, uh, politically. And also, yeah. when, the, when it comes to Syria, even... Uh, even beyond the political, militarily, and the rest. Um, now, uh, then he, he suffered uh, two defeats. One defeat at the regional level, when in 2013, the tide turned, and we shifted from the uh, revolutionary phase of 2011-2012 to, to a counter-revolutionary phase in 2013. But uh, that went along with the uh, uh, the, the, the defeat of the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, and that was a defeat for, for, for Erdogan at the same time. Um, and if, if you can add to that that during that period, uh, when he, he was uh, uh, betting on the Muslim Brotherhood, he was backed by the Obama administration in this, uh, in this policy, because that was also uh, Barack Obama's uh, preferred choice. So that failed after, uh, especially the, the Egyptian coup. I mean, the, the Syrian, the intervention of Iran in Syria, which consolidated the regime, uh, rescued the regime, and then consolidated it uh, until it needed a, a new res I mean, to be rescued again by, by Russia two years later. And, uh, and the coup in Egypt. The, the, so uh, that was a first uh, big blow. Uh, and then you had the domestic one, uh, about which uh, you know uh, more than, than I know. Uh, but in 2015, uh, he had the uh, first uh, uh, electoral uh, half defeat. It wasn't a defeat, but compared to, to the expectation and uh, to what he had been used to, uh, I mean, he, he felt... Uh, in that sense, yeah. yeah. And uh, you remember he uh, he had to reorganize elections during the same year, but uh, between the two he shifted politically uh, radically uh, to 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 the right uh, to Turkish nationalism and to the far right to alliance with the far right um, and uh, therefore which they, that goes with the alliance with the far right in Turkey the war against uh, the Kurdish uh, movement. Um, uh, that also coincided with the intervention of, uh, uh, I mean, the, the United States uh, allying with uh, the Kurdish forces in Syria <clears throat> in the fight against uh, ISIS. So that also uh, became a kind of, uh, of, uh, of red, red alarm for, for, for Erdogan. Um, and uh, uh, and then you had this uh, failed uh, coup in 2016, uh, after which he he uh, he he just uh, shifted into aligning with Putin. Uh, so he had uh, uh, lost uh, any any um, uh, you know um, uh, any hopes about the, the Obama administration at that. Uh, because of their alliance with the, the Kurdish forces in Syria, and uh, and he he shifted to to Putin uh, 
basically, even though Putin was uh, intervening in support of uh, of the Syrian regime, and Erdogan was was uh, have been the the, the main uh, sponsor of the uh, Syrian official opposition. Uh, so despite that, he went into that, and he allowed Putin to play the role, you know, of arbiter with Iran on one hand, uh, Turkey on the other. Um, so he he shifted into very opportunistic uh, uh, politics, and uh, and uh, therefore the the, uh, uh, the 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 image of Turkey, of course, has uh, shifted uh, very much, and uh, the. The, the, the influence, uh, well, except in the milieus of the Muslim Brotherhood and all that were still uh, very much uh, pro, pro Turkish government, but uh, for the rest, the, the, the clout in the region has been very much reduced. Um, and But that did not uh, prevent Erdogan from pushing forward, uh, uh, being more and more uh, aggressive in, in Syria, in, in, in I mean directly by, by the intervention of Turkish troops and invading parts of uh, of the Syrian territory and uh, intervening in Libya, as uh, as we know, and uh, pushing forward uh, aggressive uh, policies in the Mediterranean. Um, in doing all this, I think he was, uh, yes, uh, probably encouraged by Trump, that is, the anti-EU stance of Trump, uh, encourage him in doing that because he was clashing with the EU on, on this on this issue. Uh, the the Trump Putin kind of uh, synergy also encouraged him to to push forward. And and Trump, as you know, um, did him the the service of uh, of uh, of stabbing the, the Kurdish uh, movement in the back uh, in Syria and forcing them to push away from from the, the border and let the, the Turkish uh, troops. Uh, uh, enter so uh, yeah he he did all that but uh, now that uh, trump has been the, uh, has left the white house he is readjusting at the same time the economic uh, situation in turkey has deteriorated quite uh, quite uh, uh, worryingly so if you add all these factors uh, i think this had he he, und I think he understood that he has to to uh, uh, to shift again. I mean, he he couldn't carry on with the same uh, policies that uh, that he had been uh, uh, practicing uh, say over the last five years. So he he had to shift again. Now, to what extent will he be shifting? Uh, that remains to to be seen. But uh, since he's a highly opportunistic uh, politician. Everything is possible. We'll have to see in foreign policy, in domestic policy, what he will what he will be doing. But he is definitely in a position of weakness now. No more in the kind of triumphant position in which uh, he was uh, over the last uh, three four years. Jibashkar, thank you very much. It was always, it is always, and it is again. It was again uh, both inspiring and. Uh, pleasurable uh, to talk to you. Thank you very much for your insight. Thank you, Asian. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you. Always thank a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much and uh, hope to see you soon. I hope so too.